He's Mets. He's Tass. It's the Mets Grotesque Show. A new commercial. <laughs> Hello, Tass. What's going on? Oh, nothing, man. How you doing? Could you, could you like straighten out a little bit? You're a little bit. It's so uncomfortable. <laughs> uh, oh, anyway, hey, I'm excited about today's show because we got a handsome fellow on today. That's right. That's right. <laughs> hey, so chime in if you're tuning in. We got a special guest today we're going to be bringing on, and uh, I'll just be transparent and be honest with everybody. Well, all two of you. Well, I think that's new. I think me and you are the only ones on, Tess. That's all right. Perry's sharing. Well, I, hope, I hope Mr. Patino's on. <laughs> Make sure you sh share it to the mom's group of Avalon Park. <laughs> uh Hey, so um, <laughs> what do you think of the future of technology? It's pretty incredible. If you know, you know. <laughs> I mean, more than you even imagine. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. Yeah, it's incredible. Yeah. I'm ex it's, ex it's exciting. There's, there's times in life where you get excited about things, and this is one of those things I'm very excited to see what's going to happen. Are you scared at all? I haven't even thought about that side of it because I won't let myself go there, but there is a, definitely a scary side to it for sure. For sure. All right. Well, school owners, martial artists, join us. We're going to bring in Jason Patino, owner of American Top Team East Orlando, which is a BJJ slash MMA school, right? Um, but the reason why I think it's relevant is because it's all about systems, you know, business systems. And we say it all the time, but I think a lot of people sometimes don't, can envision it unless they hear it in, in a different way, that systems are systems regardless of style. And uh, I just wanted to bring Jason on to interview him a little bit, talk about some of his successes, some of his challenges, where he started. So let's bring Mr. Jason Patino up here. Whoop. Hello, sir. There he is. How's it going, guys? <laughs> What's How happening? Doing? Great, great. Can't complain. Where are you right now? Are you in your school? No, I'm in my office here. Just uh, at home. Oh, nice. Very nice. Um, what is that? The world map behind you? It is, sir. It is. So that looks like my hair <laughs> pattern when I was a senior in high school. <laughs> I believe you. <laughs> <laughs> Um, hey, thanks for joining us. And, uh, you know, I think uh, I'm hoping that we get some Brazilian Jiu Jitsu schools in here. But regardless, whether you're Kung Fu, Tai Chi, Karate, Taekwondo, doesn't matter. You know, we're talking about how can we be more successful in our business? How can we impact more people in our community? How can we do all this stuff without jeopardizing quality? People have their own opinions of things. Whether it's if you if you if you do well or you're successful, not everybody, right? But if you're successful in the martial arts business, you must be, you might be selling out, or it, or you're not producing good students, or some people believe you could be successful in martial arts, have high quality students, but it doesn't work for BJJ schools or MMA schools. So, Jason, why don't you just tell everybody just who you are, when you started training. And then when did you decide to, to start running a school? Yeah. Um, so again, my name is Jason Patino and uh, I started training jujitsu probably about 18 going on 19 years ago uh, now. And I just started at the club at UCF there um, just as a hobby. I wrestled in high school and uh, at the university of central Florida. And uh, for me, jujitsu was just something to do for fun. And before I knew it, it became like my passion. It was my love. And, and it's something I dedicated my life to. Um, and just from kind of competing in local tournaments and being in the gym a lot, I had the opportunity to buy in as a small percentage owner of the gym at the time. Uh, and that quickly basically spread to four different schools that we were kind of helping run. Um, I was teaching at two to three different schools at any given week. 
Uh, and the, the, the unfortunate part is I was working for months without getting paid a dime. Um, the schools just weren't making money. And I kind of just had to, you know, suck it up and say, well, if I want to be a part of this, this is kind of part of the grind, I thought. Um, and I found out pretty quickly that it was really more so that just we didn't know how to run the school at the time. Like we were going in circles. Uh, me and my partner at the time didn't really see eye to eye on how things should be run. Um, and that's when I kind of had met Mike Metzger. He was our landlord. And I had started hearing about these Maya systems. I had been exposed to them a little bit, had seen them, but we weren't really executing them. Uh, and eventually I was able to split off uh, from my old partners and just kind of take my one uh, gym and really focus on that one gym and run it the way that I, I thought it should be run. Um, and I was lucky enough to start doing private lessons with Metzger every week where I was teaching jujitsu and he was showing me the Maya systems. He was teaching me the way to run the school properly. Um, and I think the big difference for me was as a competitor, I left no, no stone unturned as far as how can I succeed? What are ways that I can improve on? I kind of humbly just learn from anybody and everybody. And I took that same mindset with my academy and I, I had this vision I had a goal. I wanted to have the, the most successful uh, MMA gym in Central Florida. Um, I had a vision of what I wanted the gym to look like because at the time we were in a 1,300 square foot tiny facility, um, super high rent. And, uh, and, and I knew that I wanted more. I wanted to grow. Uh, and, and I really just kind of dedicated everything I possibly could to growing the gym and learning those systems and executing the systems, you know. And so coming from where we had, you know, obviously as a new school, 20 students, maybe less. Uh, to now, you know, we're, we're at like 560 students and, you know, grossing over 165,000 uh, last month. It's really just been uh, incredible to see that teaching a ju teaching jujitsu and Muay Thai, uh, you know, in MMA can get you to this level. Um, I'd heard for years these stories of karate schools, of traditional martial arts schools uh, doing big numbers, but I just never thought it was possible for a jujitsu school to do that. And, you know, seeing now how the systems are able to be implemented and executing them and, and training my team on how to execute. Uh, I, I'm now just, it's crazy to kind of see where we've gotten to. And, and I know that we're just getting started. Hey, so you, you breeze through a lot there. First of all, I want to give you some credibility. How far did you get in your competition as a Brazilian Jiu Jitsu martial artist? Um, so I was able to, to win a world championship. Um, I had, I had meddled, I had lost a lot of times competing in the IBJ world championships and you know, brought home a gold, uh, a silver medal, uh, a couple of bronze medals as, as purple and then a brown belt, um, a silver medal. And even at, at black belt, IBJJF in the adult division, I was able to bring home a, uh, a bronze medal. And I started competing, uh, as a member of the U S world grappling team. I was winning the world team trials. I won, I think three different times and representing the United States. Uh, and that's where I won the world championships in grappling uh, several years ago. So, you know, for me, again, competing was my life. Um, in wrestling, I was an All-American, a, a state runner up in high school. So I, I always had that competitive drive. Um, and again, like as soon as I opened my gym, I knew like I didn't want to just run a gym. I didn't want this to be a hobby. If I was going to do something, I was going to put everything into it. And, uh, you know, I wanted to learn from the best. And as everybody wants to do that in whatever style it is that they might train in, I wanted to learn with, from the best in the business world. Um, so, you know, as far as like my moral compass, my values, I, I wasn't trying to sell out. I didn't want to, to be a McDojo, as people say. So I was very clear with my vision in that sense um, and that I wanted to have the best possible student experience um, for every person that walked through our doors and uh, spread that kind of that positivity, that love. And, and, you know, when you have the systems in place and you have the love and the passion for it, I've just really been able to really kind of reap the benefits. Okay. And Tass, I want to throw it to you, but before I do, I just got to ask you. So listen, for those of you just joining us, we got Jason Patino, who owns a BJJ uh, Muay Thai MMA school in Orlando. Um, and the reason why I brought him on is I got to ask this question to all of you in the industry. I just got to ask the question. Why wouldn't you want to be more successful in business? Wherever you are right now, why wouldn't you want to be more successful? And if you're sitting there saying, well, I do want to be. That's why I'm with this group. That's why I'm with Maya. That's why I'm with this group. How can I convince the industry to open up your mind and explore all options out there? But the reason Jason's on here is as a Brazilian jiu-jitsu practitioner and MMA school owner, he breezed over it. I don't know if everyone heard it. How much did you do last month in December? Uh, we did $165,845.
$160,000 plus, right? Too many numbers in there for me to remember exactly what you just said. But over 160,000 last month in December. Um, he's a world champion. He's a medalist in the, on the world level, high quality, uh, phenomenal instructor. Business is business, right? But Cass, jump in before I, I dive in on, on some systems. Sure. What, what do you have? Because I, I know just, you want to. Yeah, I just think, you know, it's, it's always kind of good to kind of like go back in time a little bit, which you touched on. But how many years ago were you a, a, a partner in this multiple school deal? How long has that been? Uh, that was about 15 years ago. And then when did you open your school? When did you break off and open your own school? 11, 11 years ago, I broke off and had my soul school there. Okay. And I'm at sorry, that did time, you say, did you sell your, did you say you sold your soul? Sold his soul. That's what I heard. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. Wonderful. And at that time, <laughs> how many students did you have? Uh, we had less than 20. We, we split off. We had less than 20 students. Um, and in, in December of 2011, we did less than $1,000 in revenue. Um, it was just, it was, it was heartbreaking, but it, it was kind of an eye opening experience. That was the straw that broke the camel's back in order for me to split from my partner. We said, listen, this isn't working. Um, and I said, you know, I just want to, I want to try it. I'm going to just go and try to do it myself. And you know, it was just, you can't go any lower than that. I mean, I suppose you could, you could go out of business, but I said, I got nothing to lose. You know, let me go all in on these systems. And then from there you ran the school and prior to Maya, right? So you went from 20 students and then how many years were you doing business before you jumped over and bought the bought in and started drinking the Kool-Aid from Maya? <laughs> uh, <laughs> um, probably at least three to four years. Um, and in all fairness, I had attended like a super show um, back in, what was that? 2008. So I, I, again, I knew some things, but we just didn't have it all executed. Um, I was also the only person working in my academy. So, I mean, as I'm sure a lot of people can relate, I was teaching the classes, of course, but I was the front desk person. I was the janitor. I was marketing, putting flyers literally on people's doorsteps, um, going to events. And when there was a UFC event, I was going to the local alehouse and putting flyers on the cars. You know, like I, I was designing those flyers myself. I, I was doing everything at the academy. Um, and we just weren't really growing like I knew that we could. Um, so it, it was probably three or four years in when, again, I had known Metzger, but he kind of extended that, that uh, offer to, to, hey, come teach me jujitsu. I'll teach you business. And that's when having kind of that daily or, or weekly coaching and follow up holding me accountable. And, and he kind of gave me that tough love that I needed because he knew I was capable of these things, but we just weren't really doing it. So when I would meet with them, he'd say, hey, did you do this? Well, no, I didn't get around to it. He's like, what are you doing? Just like in jujitsu, you go do that. You tell me to do this, but you're not doing it. And so I kind of needed that. I needed somebody to be there reminding me and just keep holding me accountable. And that's when we just started to see the numbers grow. And prior to those conversations, what was your – so you went from 20 students and then you built it up on your own prior to the conversation with Mesker. Do you remember where you are at roughly in, in numbers? Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, I, you know – I remember being proud that we had gotten up to average uh, around $10,000 a month. Um, and that was like a big deal. We were, you know, in double digits as far as like the thousands, like it was like, whoa, okay, we're, we're, we're making real money. I thought, and, and we really weren't obviously, you know, but we were paying the bills and I was paying myself now a little bit. Uh, and, and I remember telling Metzger, you know, yeah, you know, we did 10. Um, I think after a little bit working with him, we had done 12 and that was like a huge milestone to have done $12,000 in one month at the time. Awesome. And, and, and last year, we know what you did in December, but last year you did over three quarters of a million dollars. Yeah. Um, you know, one so, so we had the one location, um, one space and, you know, we only have, including myself, we have, we have six employees, you know, so, uh, it, we're just really, really focused on the team and the mission and everybody taking ownership for really what, what it is that we're trying to accomplish. And that's grow the school, change our students' lives. You know, I see, you know, in, in, in the BJJ or MMA arena specifically, right? I think there's some people, I remember years and years and years ago when it, you know, when, when it, the whole UFC thing started and then people were jumping, it was kind of like Tybo and it was this and all, it was the shiny object syndrome. And then there was talk about, well, is this going to be around? Is it going to stay? And if obviously it's, it's, it's here to stay. But I also think there's a lot of people that just because the sport is so big now, you know, there's definitely 
some positives to that is from from a marketing side there can be some negatives to that as well right when you start looking at the after effects of some of the ufc fights and maybe scaring people but you know some people rely just on that type of of you know word of mouth or the marketing so to speak that's that's being put out by these big organizations to grow a school do you agree that if you just had that that would make a difference or is it that in conjunction with the business systems that you've overlaid on top of your school that, that have helped make the big difference? It has to be the systems. Um, you know, word of mouth and popularity definitely help um, and how mainstream now MMA is and jujitsu is, is just so popular and people want to get on board. Um, but without the systems, I think uh, a lot of the schools, what you're seeing is, is they're doing good. You know, you open the, you open the doors and you put jujitsu on the, you know, on your sign up, up, up top and people are going to come in, but, a lot of people get sucked into that. Oh, we're doing good. You know, we have, you know, maybe we've grown to a hundred students. We're doing okay, but you're never going to maximize your full potential unless you have the solid systems, you know, that are proven. Um, and that's something that I, I also was guilty of uh, when we had grown a little bit and we were doing 10,000 for me, that was a huge improvement. And I thought at the time I was like, man, we're doing so well and we've grown so much. And it was Mike that kind of opened my eyes and said, man, you know, look what these other schools are doing and you're capable of that. And so it's the systems ultimately that are going to take a good school to that great level. Um, Jim Collins has a, a great book called Good to Great, and it really discusses that kind of mentality that people get. And when they're doing good, they get complacent. They're kind of just, uh, they settle. You know, like, okay, I'm paying my bills. I'm breaking even or whatever it is. Um, but that's not the style competitor that I was. I wasn't going to be, you know, I wasn't going to settle for just, you know, making it to a big tournament or making it to, you know, wherever like, I want to win, I want to be the best. And if you have that mentality, it's going to drive you to try to get to that level of great and beyond. And that's what the systems, you need the systems to get to that level. Hey, and I, gonna, I, go ahead, Seth. I, I was going to pass it over to you on the systems portion, but I want to ask one last question because I'm curious to know, because you went from doing a thousand dollars, right? A month to over three quarters of a million dollars. Now that you're at that level, what do you think is easier? And this, is, I think, is inspiring potentially for, for small school owners. Was it easier to get to that level or is it easier to maintain at that level? What, what do you think is harder? Um, <laughs> I think it's harder putting the work in to get to that level because you're already grinding. Like no matter what, I know, I know what it's like to do seven, eight thousand dollars in a month and you're working hard. And now that we're doing, you know, well over that, you know, 10 times that amount, uh, I'm, I'm working less, you know, I, I, I have way more freedom. I have more time now to maintain. And obviously I'm having to uh, supervise and coach and, and my staff, you know, we're having our staff meetings and I'm making sure that they're doing what they need to be doing and I'm still working. But uh, yeah, it's, it's crazy how when you implement the systems and you're able to make money uh, without even needing to necessarily be in the facility, um, you can start to kind of taper off the amount of work that's that's necessary to maintain. Now, of course, I'm still trying to grow, so I'm still putting in more work um, and still doing other things to fill my time. But I think um, that grind is what people are are kind of, they're afraid of, but they don't realize you're already still putting in the work. You might as well put in the work, but with proven systems. And, and a, question, a question here, do you have a second job or are you full-time BJJ? Um, I've been full-time BJJ for at least uh no for the uh, the 11 years like since i opened i i went all in yeah I, I used to deliver pizzas i used to be a server like a lot of people you know i was waiting tables um and i just said no i, I want to do this full time i'm just gonna i'm gonna make i'm burning the boats you know i burnt the boats i'm like we're going all in <laughs> hey i want to i want to say this for everybody out there because the other thing in this industry is uh we tend to bash other people in the industry for whatever reason, especially if they're in our area, we tend to, you know, say, oh, well, those students suck over there, or, you know, they're just a McDojo or this, or man, a competitor just moved in. Jason, I've been helping you for years, right? Telling you exactly what to do and how to do it. How far are you from my school? I'm one mile from your world training center. And I want to say like maybe three, three and a half miles from your Avalon school. Exactly. So. <laughs> exactly. My point is, is help the industry and we help ourselves. There's plenty of people to go around. It's when you really start trying to compete and, and, and you're worried about your competition. And let's say they're not professional in some way, shape or form. That gives martial arts a bad look and a bad name. It doesn't help anybody. 
right? So I always want to try to help anyone we can possibly help out. And then you could say, well, he's BJJ, you know, it's different. Look, at the end of the day, do you take kids? Yes. And so do we. And at the end of the day, most moms don't know the difference between BJJ, karate, or kung fu. They just see where a martial arts school is. They want to enroll their kid. And it's up to you to to, to um, sell them on your product or service. But <clears throat> what's interesting, Jason, and, and what, what I want to ask you is, now that you're you're making money, has that impacted in any way, shape, or form, or lessen the quality of the instruction your students get on the mat from when you were making a thousand dollars a month? Um, it has impacted it uh, in that we've gotten better. <laughs> like I, I think I teach way better now than I did back then. Um, that's just something that comes with time and experience. And when you're all in, you want to grow, you want to get better. So I've I've kind of humbly tried to learn from everybody on how to be a better coach, a better instructor, and a bit better business owner. And let me ask the question to all the people watching this, if you can just put this in, how long have you been in business? Can you just answer that and put it in the chat box, everybody? How long have you had your own school or worked in your school that you're currently in? So if you can let us know how many years you've been running your school, I just kind of want to know, do we have some newbies on here? Do we have some vets on here that have been around 30 years, 40 years? You know, what's, what's the deal? And then the follow-up question would be, and I'll ask you this, Jason, while people hopefully answer. Um, uh, there we go. Let me ask you this. What's next, Jason? When's enough enough? I mean, you're doing over three quarters of a million dollars. You have a, a quality of life because you work less in your school today than you did when you had no staff, obviously, right? Mm -hmm. You're still a high level jujitsu jiu practitioner. It's not like you... have you know, shied away from martial for martial arts because now you're just a business guy. And and I also say that too. I, I like to, you know, people I think view me as a you're probably the only guy that knows me more of a practicing martial artist than a business guy. I mean, I'm on the mats all the time, but nobody, I think a lot of people perceive us business guys as I, I put it this way. I know they do because we've had people in the elite program tell some friends of theirs that own schools hey, you should really talk to Metzger. And there's been a consensus where people said, why would I listen to him? He's not even a martial artist. I mean, so <laughs> there's the perception. But my point is, is you're still a martial artist, but you're running a business. But when's enough enough? Uh, man, I, I'm just always trying to grow. I have that. I try to embody that growth mindset and I'm very goal oriented. So, you know, I like to share my story with, with people when I talk as far as like my three main goals when I, when I started training was I wanted to earn my black belt in jujitsu. I wanted to own my own school, right? And I wanted to be a world champion. And, you know, when I was able to kind of eventually cross those all off my list, I started accomplishing, you know, setting new goals. I wanted to have a bigger facility. I wanted to own my own building, right? So we did that. I, I bought um, the, the two units that we operate out of now currently. Um, and, you know, one of my other goals was to be a consultant. I said, you know, as I'm getting better at this, I want to share this with other people. I have so many friends that own schools and they're struggling. And for me, it's now easy. It's easy to explain the system. It's easy to explain why they work. And so that's kind of been my passion lately is not only teaching and training, but teaching people how to run their school. Um, you know, other goals I have is well, definitely we, we want to hit a million dollars in revenue um, this year. And, uh, you know, another goal is I eventually want to, you know, publish a lot of the writings that I put out. So I, I want to put a book out eventually. Um, so, you know, as we accomplish these goals, we have to set new ones. Otherwise, we get complacent, life gets boring, and that's not my style. I want to just keep growing, get better and better. Listen, uh, I'm just, I'm just reading, I'm just looking at, I posted them up on there to show you how long some of these people have been in business. But let me ask you this. What was the hardest part for you as a martial artist? Because look, you just heard you right? You have this mentality of, and Tass, you asked a great question because we talk about this all the time. What's harder, getting there or maintaining? Jason still, in all fairness, Jason, every year has been a record year for you. Since we started working together, every year has been a record, right? Yeah. The only year that we, we just kind of oh. equal the previous year was COVID. It was 2020. Right. We just did the same amount we did the previous year. Other than right. that, every Which, year has way, been a record year. is an achievement in itself to do the same you did the previous year during COVID, right? Especially in the jujitsu world. Do you know how many people called me and, and said in jujitsu, we can't do it, you can't teach virtual, we can't train, we can't do this. 
there are ways and there are systems because that's our job to help these clients get through any disaster and still maintain and do whatever we had to do. And we're not going to steer over into that area. But here's the thing, though. You haven't experienced that yet because you're not there because you're growing every year. Every year is a record. But it's harder to maintain. It's harder to maintain in any area of life when you reach the top. Let's just use a Conor McGregor example, right? I mean, the dude was unstoppable coming up to the belt. Every champion. You have exceptions like a George St. Pierre maybe, right? And Anderson. But think of how many times have people made it to the belt and only defended it two or three times and then lost it. And then they got to get back, right? It's hard to maintain. Why? Because subconsciously we can get comfortable. We can get comfortable. And you need somebody to push you to not get comfortable if that's something you want, right? Because your goal may not be to grow to a million dollars, but your goal may be, I just don't want to lose what I have. But if your goal is to not only just, I just don't want to lose what I have, there's only one direction you can go and that's down. You either stay right here or you don't. But if your goal is to go here, if you fall short here, you're still here, right? And we want to try to always grow. So for the people that have been in business for 16 years, 40 years, 20 years, right? Are, are you good? Because that's not what we do, right? We want to try to get you to that next level. But that next level isn't always financial. We talk about it, Jason, because again, I want to say what he said. I asked Jason if he would be willing to come on as a Maya Elite consultant specifically for our BJJ schools and MMA schools, because he's in it, right? And he can, he, he can teach and he's, he's just, he reaches the top of everything that he does and he commits and he's all in. So he's consulting now as a Maya Elite consultant for those schools, but it's not all, the one thing you said to me, if you remember Jason was, well, look, what's the time commitment to consult because Quality of life is important to me. You have a young son, you're married, right? You want to have family time. You love traveling. You're traveling the world. You travel the world all the time, right? And so we went over that. But sometimes it's not always about reaching the next level of financial success. It's about reaching the next level for quality of life for you. Or it's about reaching the next level for your people, your team, the people under you that has helped you get to you to where you are. And that's where I'm at. I'm so hungry to grow just to provide a better career and opportunity for all the black belts and all the students that are now been with me. Mr. Peterman's been with me 29 years, right? And so I want to have them be able to continue to grow. So you got to find something that's going to motivate you and, and keep you hungry because you may reach it to a point where you're like, we're doing great. I quality of life is more important to me now. You know, I have enough money or I have enough success financially or whatever it is, but you got to find that motivation. But I still don't understand. And Jason, I'm going to ask you as a martial artist, was there ever any hesitancy? And what was it like, for example, getting the heads of our industry, you know, everyone on here, whether they want to admit it or not, would like to be doing better than what they're doing. I mean, every, I mean, they just would. If I said I can snap my fingers and double your gross revenue and your profit, and I walked down a line and said, do you want me to snap my fingers, give you double profit? I don't know who's going to say, mm, no, I don't want that, right? I just don't believe it. So I believe everybody wants to be able to do more. They may not want to do what it takes to do more. That's fair. But Jason, do you believe that not just Maya, you, you've been, have you been part of or, or attended other organizations out there? No. Consulting? No? Good. You're a smart man. Um, no, I'm, kidding. I'm kidding. There's other groups that can always help people in this industry. What do you think holds them back, Jason? I think a lot of people are very similar in that they have this fear in their mind. They, they, they create these fears that they think, oh, well, no, people aren't going to go for that. You know, and it's a lot of times that rule of 80, 20, where we focus on this small percentage versus the larger percentage who aren't really going to have a problem with how you run your academy. Um, and so I remember for me, like one of the obstacles was when you wanted me to implement the pricing structure, the, the Maya pricing structure. And I was just like, who's going to put a down payment down, you know, or who wants to commit to, to 12 months? That was even an obstacle at first. And you, you, you had me kind of start with baby steps. Uh, and then when we started offering 24 month 
uh, programs. That was kind of something I was just so afraid that people wouldn't be wanting to commit to. And then eventually when we finally moved to the full 36 months and here we are, and it's, it's a non-issue. Like uh, we, we develop these fears in our head of what we think people are going to say or how they're going to object to these new things that we implement. Um, I mean, we even implemented a uniform policy, you know, and, and I remember that was a big deal. I really was stressing over that. And, and I remember um, my, uh, another my, one of my mentors, my instructor, Master Ricardo Laborio, um, asking me what I was afraid of. And I said, well, you know, I don't want people to, to, to like compare my gym to like, like a Gracie Baja where they make you wear their uniforms. And he said, Jason, Gracie Baja is the most successful <laughs> jujitsu academy in, in the world. They have, you know, over a thousand schools like, why are you afraid of doing that? And, and it just kind of was like a light bulb. And so a lot of times I was creating these fears in my head. I have heard from now my clients that they have the same type of fears. And so I love that I have now been able to overcome these things, show them that it's possible, succeed. And now my students are happy. They love it. It's not like we're pulling a fast one. You know, a lot of our students have been with us for many, many years and they love training at our academy. So now I see that that was just something I was creating in my head. The fear was not real. There was no reason to, 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 to kind of hold back or fight back on implementing these new policies that, that have helped us grow. And Tass, like Jason, you may or may not realize, but you, in your answer, you probably just scared about eight people off this show because you said, you know, when you told us to go to 12 months and down payments. So what people are thinking is up oh, contracts, you know, they need contracts. So they, you know, you should never do contracts. Didn't that you should do month to month and this, that, and the other. And it's not that it's wrong to do month to month. But what I have to convince the industry is it's also not wrong to do 12 months. Not if you're upfront and honest with your customers before they sign up in your school. Um, but the fear is, is why would I lock somebody in who, who may not want to be at my school, who may not want to be there? And, uh, you know, if you're doing a good job, they're going to stay. And what I try to explain to everybody watching, and I'll explain to you guys, right, because this is important to understand this, um, is... Most people come to your school for a specific result. I want focus for my kid or my kid saw a, a martial arts movie or I heard this is a great way to get in shape if I'm an adult or I want to learn self-defense or uh, my kid's been bugging me to do martial arts because his friend Billy trains here. So he's been bugging me. So we thought we'd come in. They have no idea the education and the life changing program that they're about to get into. They don't have any idea. So if they get into it because they want to get in shape, what happens when they get in shape? They may think, oh, I got in shape, right? And they're not thinking the day, all you martial artists, no one knows what the experience is like the day they get a black belt wrapped around their waist. And the sense of accomplishment they feel, the confidence they feel, the pride that they feel. Um, the doors that, that that opens as far as career opportunities, if they choose to do it, the leadership that they're going to be doing as a black belt in market, they don't know what that is. They don't know that feeling. So when somebody comes in and they say, well, my kid wants to do it. Well, especially with kids. Well, what happens when the kid says, mom, I don't want to go because it got a little boring. The last class was kind of not fun. His friend Billy didn't show up for two weeks, so he doesn't want to go because his friend's not there. They're going to just leave. Right now, you can say, well, we provide service. But at the end of the day, if they don't want the product, you can give the best service. I'm not going to a seafood restaurant, no matter how great the service is, because I don't like seafood. I mean, I don't care how great it is. I, I don't want I don't like it. If somebody doesn't like your program, we whether they're on an agreement or a month to month, we try to get them through it. But but instead of selling a membership, which when you sell a month to month membership, there's no end. You're paying to be allowed to come into the facility. I mean, that's what you're paying for. It's every month and you get the right to come in and train in our school. I like to sell people a tangible program that they sign up for. Here is our program. It is 12 months of martial arts lessons. This is what you're gonna learn in those 12 months. This is what you're gonna get in those 12 months. This is the life skills you're gonna get it's X amount of dollars. How would you like to finance the program? And then people can decide whether they want to buy that program or not. But if somebody's listening to this and like the industry, people that don't like contracts, right? If you're trying to sell somebody a 12 month membership contract, that's hard to do. 
I think that's hard to do because there's a bad uh, 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 perspective of a 12 month membership contract. I am locking you in for 12 months and you're gonna pay this every month, just the right to come in, as opposed to here's the package you're buying, here's the program you're buying, boom. It's the same thing and I say it all the time. If we go to the car dealership and I wanna buy a car, we have a choice, all of us. Hand them a check for $50,000 or sign a contract that you're gonna pay for that car over three years, four years, five years, six years, whatever you want to do, you decide how you want to budget, but this is what I'm buying and I will pay for it over time. That's easier for me. Same thing in the martial arts business. And I'm trying to get the industry to understand that. And then there's, I know there's people on here saying, oh, it's, you know, you're just playing with words. It's a contract. It, it is a contract. It absolutely is, but it's a finance contract is what it is. And again, for everybody that doesn't, and I'm not saying you, you need to do contracts to be successful. I'm not saying that. But Jason, you were nervous about it. You did it in the BJJ world, which it, you know how many times we hear in BJJ, we're different. It's different. These people are different. These guys are like, we deal with a lot of college people and a lot of younger guys, and they just want to hardcore train. They're not going to. How many students do you have now? Uh, we're at 560. 560. So yeah, they don't want to a lot pay. of college kids that you know don't, don't want to pay. <laughs> I mean, so my my point is is before you knock the verbiage, call us up and just hear the explanation. And that was a five minute overview, but there is a explanation and a way of presenting. But listen, everybody on here, you can charge ten thousand a month if you want to charge ten thousand a month and charge people to drink out of your water fountain. It's okay. Just tell people that when they come in before they sign up with you. Walk in and just say, hey, I just want to let you know, every time you take a sip of that water fountain, it's $1,000. And and then I would be like, man, that's nickel and diming. But this guy might walk in and say, man, I think that's a great deal. All right, I'm signing up. I mean, it's okay. Just be upfront and honest with your people before they enroll. Um, and then real quick, do you think uh, way back in the day, that's why in, in back in the day, champions lasted longer because of less money and they stayed hungry. You guys can answer that. <clears throat> I think that was in relation to the, you know, what, it, what is it? Is it harder to get to where you are maintain, or is it right. harder to, to, to maintain, right? Right. But that's true. Yeah. When you're hungry, you're on the way up, you're willing to kind of do a lot more. And then a lot of times you get complacent when you're at the top. Very common. It is, but you got to, it's a mentality is what it is. And, and, and Jason, I don't know for I know for me, right. <clears throat> when I got on board with the Maya systems, <clears throat> same thing. I remember coming on board in July and by September. So in July, I came on the super show in September. I completely revamped my entire school, which that will scare some people like, oh, I can't do that. But that was my mentality. Like I'm, I'm going all in. Right. But for me having those systems and like, there's a difference between the grind and there's a difference between implementing, seeing results and having fun along the way. And I remember very specifically for me, it was like, man, this is freaking, I was, I, I wanted to do the grind. I wanted to do the work because I was seeing the results and the, and the dividends that were being paid on that. So it was a different kind of grind. It was a grind with purpose and a grind with results as opposed to the grind that you do every day. And man, we just don't see the needle move. So I, for me, the growing part was extremely fun for me. I had a blast doing it. And and doesn't mean it was always, there was a stressful times. Of course. Did I get pushed to do things that maybe I wasn't comfortable? Of course. But we all know what got us to where we are isn't going to get us to where we want to go. But when you have an open mind, you've got a coach, you've got someone there that you can rely on. I mean, the, the you know, the, the sky is, 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 is the limit, right? And so I don't know for you if that was... Was that fun? I'm guessing it was fun for you, which is why you're at where you're at today. Yeah, definitely. And, you know, and at the end of the day, martial arts is a lot of our passion, right? You're not opening a martial arts school or teaching martial arts unless you enjoy it. So it was fun. And like you said, when you're seeing success, that definitely motivates you. That kind of makes you want to see more. Well, if this is possible, well, what else can we do? Or how much more can we grow? Um, so yes, not, not to be mistaken there. Absolutely. It was hard work growing and getting to where we are, but I enjoyed it the, the whole time, you know, and every time we hit a new milestone or we, we hit a new record, it was always just more motivation to kind of keep going and seeing, you know, well, what else are we capable of? Yeah, that's great. Hey, out of all the systems you rely on, which one do you think was the most vital to your studio? 
pricing structure. I mean, hands down, no question. If you don't have the pricing structure and you don't know how to explain it and, and have it all kind of professionally laid out uh, and the system for when and how to present it, uh, you're, you're going to struggle. Like hands down, that will make a huge difference in any school. Day one, if you start implementing this, you'll see a big difference. And by the way, it's funny because, you know, we have our core four program that we do. Maya core four or four core is it? I can't, I can't even get it. I, it. It's Maya core four. It's it's four sessions and it started yesterday and it was, you know, it's each week. Well, yesterday, next week, next week, next week. And the first thing that we cover on there is pricing structure. Which, by the and, way, is the four options and the four step enrollment process. Metzger has a problem with the number four. We didn't, we don't really know. Agree. It's very, it's crazy. <laughs> it's, it's, it is. Um, <clears throat> but trains four days a week. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but Tassel said when I came up with these four things, because I wanted to give something that would really help the schools. And you said, are you sure you want to give them away, give away the pricing right. structure? Like that's like, Goal. You want to give, give away the keys to the, the castle is what I said. Yeah. Keys yeah. to the castle. And I'm like, dude, the mission here is to help these schools grow. And Jason, it's funny you said that. What's the most vital thing? And it's pricing structure. But here's what we know, because you also said this in your statement, Jason. I can't just tell you what to do and you do it. you got to know how to present it and have it down. And you also said from day one, that can make a difference in your school. From day one, that can start generating. If somebody started that on February 1st, right. will they make more money by the end of February than, than they did last year or than they would have if they didn't have that pricing structure? No question. No question. So, to, the tune of, to the tune of about three times as much, by the way, because I've done the math on it a hundred different times, right? I mean, and by the way, I don't want to get afraid of it because it's the easiest thing that you can implement in your school, but there's a right way and a wrong way to do it. Right. And that's the other thing is some people may hear it and then they may have saw it somewhere and then they go do it and they get all of their existing students. And that's just, that's not the right way to do it. That's why that's where the coaching comes in, making sure that you're doing the right things, doing those things with integrity um, because that goes a long way with the longevity of the existing students that you have as well. <clears throat> and, and by the way, I'm just saying facts, but, if you do month to month, you can't have this pricing structure. You can't use it. It doesn't work if you're a month to month school, this pricing structure. And I'm not saying you need to do this pricing structure, but I'll say this over and over and I can bring people on the show. You can call me. Your student value cannot be as much or as high on a month to month as a term, whether it's a three month, six month, 12 month, it cannot be. So with, with a with a price point of 159 a month in our schools, no after school pickup programs, no after school, I say it all the time, no big full summer camps, none of that stuff. 159 a month for our evening program, our average student value between all seven of our schools, which is now eight, we just opened a school in the last 30 days. Uh, but last year, all seven of our schools averaged a $226 student value. And what's amazing about that, that I want people to know, because it's what we don't know, right? It, it's, we base our decisions on what we do know. We, we, we don't always base our decisions on what we possibly don't know, but our family plan, everybody, and our basic program is the first two family members pay full price, 159 and 159, and all additional family members in our basic program are free. They do not pay a monthly fee, but we still count them as active students. And those free family members still have an average value of $226 a month. And people are probably sitting there saying, well, I don't understand, that's not possible. Exactly, but, but it is, and we do. And you're more than welcome to come to Orlando anytime you want. Sorry, did you hear that little grunt, Jason? <laughs> It's your fault, Jason. <laughs> anyway, so if you would, can give advice to a BJJ or MMA school about business systems and about taking their school to the next level and whatever you think they're afraid of, what advice would you give them? I would absolutely advise people to have an open mind 
um, and to just look at other successful schools, you know, and if it's working in other schools, you know, why can't it work for you? Why can't it work in your school? And just like when you're open minded, when you start training in any martial art, you know, we all started as, as no belt and then as a white belt and jujitsu being unique. You know, a lot of us have been doing jujitsu for many years. If you're running a school, uh, you know, you have to have an open mind and the, the moves and the techniques are very much against what your natural instincts tell you to do. You know, we, we tend to kind of want to stick with what we know, keep it simple. And you learn in jujitsu. No, you have to open up. You have to do different things than what you think you would need to do. Uh, and that's the right way to do it. And so the same is true in business. You know, it, it, it is a martial arts academy. Um, and if this is your passion, if this is where you're going to be working and putting your time in day in and day out, why not use a proven system, you know, that's worked not just for traditional martial arts schools, but has obviously worked for jujitsu and MMA schools like mine and many other schools around the country. So uh, you know, you don't really have anything to lose, but to keep growing. So have an open mind and, you know, execute at the end of the day, be motivated. If you're motivated to grow, you're motivated to get better, execute. And, and remind me, were you a month to month school? Uh, yeah, I mean, we were month to month or we did like six months, you know, that was like, oh, we offer a six month uh, program. So basically month to month. So when you decided, when you did go to 12 months, was there a difference on enrolling people or? Not really. I had this fear that so many people were going to like object or, or you just refuse to sign up. And then the reality was, you know, in, you know, let's say 20 people that might sign up 50, we might have like one or two just kind of ask a question about it. And then of course you reassure them because you want to be honest. Listen, if you want to get better at martial arts or if you want to achieve whatever goal it is that you're here uh, because you want to achieve, it's going to take time. It's going to take commitment. You're going to have to, you know, sacrifice the, you know, instead of going home and watching TV and sitting on your couch, yeah, you're going to be showing up here. And that's why we're doing this is to get closer to achieving your goals. And when you're honest with people, I think they kind of understand and they respect that, you know, we're not trying to, again, pull a fast one. The last thing I ever wanted to do was, was somebody to come back and be like, Hey, you didn't say this, or you didn't tell me this, or now, you know, or going and telling other, you know, leaving bad reviews. Like, no, absolutely. We're here in the community. We've been here for you know, this school for 11 years and we've had many students who leave, you know, they moved or whatever, they go to college and they come back many years later. And I love that I can sleep well at night and that the students are happy with what we're offering them. So again, it was those fears that I had in my head and no, we, we'd never really had any real hard with people saying, no, I'm just not going to sign up. You know, you explain it to them and you know, we're, we're honest. Hey, just curious, what, how, what's, what did you gross in 2021? Not last year, but the year before. 2021 um oh we grossed uh, about 530 530 000. and then the next year you jumped to what what was last year uh, about 745,000 530 to 745 i mean huge massive jumps why do i ask that because here's what i would i would encourage you guys to do just to know right you cuz you don't know you don't know unless you've been and by the way, if anybody's been to a Maya Elite event, that is completely different, Jason, completely different than the martial arts super show in Elite event. I mean, people think, well, I've been to the super show and I didn't like it or I loved it, right? Totally different. The Maya Elite seminars are very specific and educational, like on what you can take home right now and implement and A to Z, all the details. Uh, and it's, 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 it was, it's definitely more educational than, than inspirational. If you're comparing it to the super show, it's just a different feel, but he, you're, you're hearing from, from Jason, who will be there, who is a speaker. We have our all systems go event in March, March 24th and 5th. From what I heard this morning, I think we have six spots left for non elite schools. I, I believe is that it was six or seven spots left because it is an elite event, all systems go, but we do reserve some spots for non-elite schools to attend. And I think there's six spots left. Are you willing to invest? It's 299 bucks, by the way, if you want to come to the event, 299 bucks. It's a Friday, Saturday, March 24th, 25th. Are you willing to risk whatever a plane ticket costs and a hotel night? We're at the Hyatt Regency Orlando and uh, we have a block of rooms. I think it's 200 bucks plus their taxes or whatever for a room night. And whatever your plane ticket is, we treat everyone to dinner on Friday night. We're going to Texas de Brazil, by the way, on Friday night. 
See, look at Jason. He gets all giddy when you talk about all you can eat. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> so, hey, that's a nice dinner, isn't it? I love it. I'm so excited for that. <laughs> Texas Day Brazil, Friday night. We take everybody to dinner archery. Um, so you might invest 700 bucks to, to come out for, for two days, right? Come flying in the morning on Friday. We start at 1 p.m. We're done 1 p.m. Saturday. Okay, so you can fly out Saturday afternoon. Is it worth, let's say, a thousand bucks to possibly change the rest of your business life? Is it worth it? You know the answer is yes, right? Now, some of you are saying, well, I don't like these, this Metzger guy. I think he's cocky. I think he's this. I, fantastic. We still can change your business life. Come and see for yourself, right? And I try to tell people all the time, but then go to another seminar, you know, next month or the month after. Invest in yourself and find something that just makes sense to you and clicks. I will say this too. There's a lot of, of uh, you know, I believe all the consultants out there in this industry are really trying to help, help, help the industry. I, I do. Um, but you got to ask the questions. So if I tell you, if Jason sits here and says, I'm a BJJ MMA school, it sounds really awesome, right? That he did over 700 and, or he did $745,000, three quarters of a million dollars. We well, need to ask the question, well, do you have an after school pickup program where you charge a hundred hours a week per kid and you have vans or, you know, did you uh, run these summer camps where you generated 200,000 because you had 200 kids in summer camp and 200 hours a week? The answer is no. The answer is no. It's all no, right? We, we do it with just our core evening program. And you need to ask the questions. Here's another question you should ask everybody. Well, tell me about where your school is located, Jason. Are you in a very high income area? You know, and then what is there no competition around you? There's no other schools? Well, no, I have a school one mile from him and another school three miles from, from that. And you're probably wondering, well, that's a lie because why would Metzger have two schools three miles apart? because we do <laughs> that's our model if you come to orlando seven of our schools are probably an average of four miles apart four four and a half miles our eighth school is many miles it, it, it's far out because it's in a whole different area but jason school's a mile away so density's big i would say we're in a, a middle class upper middle class middle class area where your school is jason what would you call that it's in a yep. college town. It's UCF. You're what, five miles from UCF? Yep. Yeah, five miles from University of Central Florida. A lot of college kids. So, but these are the questions to ask. We're not in an area where the average household income is over a hundred thousand dollars. I can tell you that right now. It's not over a hundred thousand dollars in average household income. It's not, right? So these are the questions you should ask because you need to know whatever they're preaching. Will this work where I'm at in Kansas? You know, will, will this work, right? If I'm in Beverly Hills, California, and my rent's 15,000 a month for 2,500 square feet, and I'm charging $250 a month, and I'm telling you how I'm doing a million dollars a year in revenue, can you charge $250 a month in, in, in your town? I mean, I can't, we can't in our town. I mean, that would, we'd be out, we'd out price point, out price ourselves at that rate, right? So we have systems that are universal. I don't care what style, where you're at, what it is, because Jason, are you familiar with my Curry Ford school? Check us on Curry yes. Ford. Okay, what, in, what in, uh, income level do you think that area is? Uh, definitely a low socioeconomic area. Right, and guess what? They have the same price points, the same systems, and that school, by the way, in a lower economic area, I'll just tell you, let's see, I have it right here. They did $627,239.69, that school last year. So mm -hmm. $627,000. Now, the school in, in the area that Jason's in did 879000 but that, that's okay. But we still did 627,000 in a low socioeconomic area, right? These are the questions you need to ask. If you want information on the event where Jason will be speaking, Shane Tossel will be speaking, I will be speaking, Mr. Josh Arsamont will be speaking, Chris Rodriguez will be speaking, 
Kurt Klingenmeyer will be speaking. Adam Harmon will be speaking. We have a keynote speaker, Jay McGowan. He'll be speaking. It's it's it will have over 300 school owners there, people there. Um, that that that's just as powerful when you're mingling with these people as hearing the speakers or meeting the speakers. And why do we treat everyone to dinner? By the way, when you go to seminars, do they treat 300 and some people to dinner? I, maybe they do, but that costs us a shitload of money to treat over at Texas Day Brazil. We're not taking you to Taco Bell, right? We treat everyone. Why do we do that? Because we know how important it is for you to be surrounded by these other people that are success minded and driven where you're building rapport and you're building relationships with these people because they will help you as much as we will help you. We help each other. And that's why we take everybody to dinner. We just feel it's really important to bake, uh, break bread together and, and everybody likes to talk over a good meal. So anything you want to end with Jason or Tass? Well, yeah, Jason, what are your what are your goals? You mind sharing for the next five years with your martial arts school? Uh, well, this year we're trying to hit a million. Um, at the end of this year, uh, in December, we're hoping to do two hundred thousand uh, dollars in this coming December. Um, but I mean, I, I think we may have to end up buying uh, land and building our own building uh, from scratch. So that, that right now we're kind of entertaining that for the five uh, five year plan. Um, and again, just keep getting better. We're hiring more, more staff, keep growing. Um, the goal here in the next couple months is to hit 600 students, um, and just seeing how far we can take this. Good for you, man. That's amazing. Congrats on all your success. Hey, and just Thank while you. he's on here, my five-year goal is to get a stripe on my brown belt. Hey, come on. We Don't all got to be dreamers. So high, Mike. <laughs> <laughs> I, hey, I shoot for the stars. <laughs> I love it. Anything else, guys? Jason, anything you want to just end and say to the group? Uh, no, again, you know, just kind of going back to that idea of, you know, having an open mind and, you know, just you, you, we should be uh, we should have this humble uh, mindset of just wanting to grow and wanting to get better. It's natural when we train any martial art, uh, the goal is to improve and you have to learn new new techniques. And absolutely, there's a struggle. Um, it's a hit to your ego, you know, where you're not doing as well performance wise because you're trying to implement new things to your game and it, and it might feel uncomfortable. It might feel unnatural at times, but if it's something that's proven and somebody's coaching you and they're helping you, um, have that open mind, go out there and really just try your best. I mean, we, we preach this to our students, um, every week and, and again, I want to lead by example. So I'm trying to be the best that I can be the best version of myself in every aspect of my life, whether I'm talking, you know, as a father, as a husband, as a, a boss, as a competitor, um, as a teacher, and as a business owner. So I'm not just going to slack as a business owner um, because I don't want to step out of my comfort zone. No, I'm, I'm always out of my comfort zone because that's where, that's where the growth lies. You know? So have that open mind. Um, you know, and if you can make it to that All Systems Go event, I think that's going to be a great way to see firsthand uh, all the benefits that you can kind of implement in your school. Talk to other school owners who've been there, who, who were maybe hesitant also at first. Um, and I think that anybody that shows up to that event is going to see an immediate improvement in their school's revenue and the growth and the culture and just everything. And I think that's going to kind of motivate people to keep going from there. Uh, and, and, real, and, and, and then they said, uh, Mr. Desjardins said, how do you accommodate that many students? How many classes a day and students in each class? Um, you know, we just have one mat uh, at my academy. So hold on, Jason, we have that, that's important. That's another mistake people make. And, and, and people can debate me on this too. Having two floors and this, that, because I've done it all, done it all. One mat, Jason, we've talked about this. Didn't we talk about this back in the day, having two mats, two floors? If you want to maximize one floor, it's about the schedule. But go ahead. How do you accommodate how many classes a day and students? Well, well, the second super important part of the systems is is the schedule. You know, so the way that that I was taught to to tweak our schedule to offer class times, you know, that'll accommodate basically anybody that walks through the doors. Um, our class sizes, I'd say right now, like our bigger class sizes are probably in uh, 40, 45 people. Um, you know, it's big, but uh, it's not unmanageable by any stretch of the imagination. You know, so we got creative with the schedule. We fit the kids in earlier in the day. Of course, the adults at night. We offer 6.30 a.m. classes, 11 a.m. and 12 p.m. classes. Um, we do have like a small mat area for people to stretch or warm up or private lessons off to the side. But 
we're running strictly one mat. And again, the schedule is the way that you're able to make that happen. And by the way, you have classes at six in the morning or 6.30, what time? What are Yeah, 6.30, six we have jujitsu classes Monday through Friday. Right, right. And so there's, it's a lot. Because sure. someone will probably ask the question, how, how big is your mat, your main mat? Well, I say your main mat, there's only one mat, but there's a small stretching area, but you're-, you're, um, you're... It's, it's about 2,000 square feet of mat space. All right, there you go. That's a, that's a big mat. You know, some, some people's schools are only 2,000 square feet, right? So that's, that's way bigger. Space. And by the way, I'm going to reiterate too, Jason had a goal to buy his own building. And we worked on that and planned and talked about that for a couple years probably that you really just wanted to do when, when it was right. When the opportunity came, you, you, bought, you, you bought the building. Yeah, yeah. I knew I wanted to move somewhere bigger and we had almost – signed a contract to lease a space and like oddly enough they went out of business and it just kind of fell through and then you know obviously it was you mike i remember december uh right after uh covid 2020 december and you said you know what just put an offer and just see what happens uh and we're dealing with bouncing back from a lockdown and covid and people are still aren't leaving their houses in other parts of the country and i'm over here putting offers in to buy the building it was crazy but uh, you know, when you invest in yourself you believe in yourself and you know that's what i did i said i know i can make this work and and we did yeah, I mean, you, you really have done unbelievable. And that's why we, we love having you on the team to try to help the industry and, uh, you know, share your success and help others achieve uh, that level of success and, and more. So appreciate the time, man. Appreciate you coming on. And uh, yes, and, and it's funny how you you said, I'll relate this to, to, to martial arts as we're martial artists, because don't we always talk that jujitsu, the lessons of jujitsu are really lessons in life you can apply business and life to to jujitsu and by the way my background's taekwondo everybody you know i'm uh, that was my background but i i've been training in jujitsu for a, a long time now and and jason uh promoted me to uh, to to brown belt with mike lee and some of the other guys that work with me on i don't know december november december just a couple of month or two ago I, I don't know but um but it's what you said last week jason in class you were, well, I say in class, Jason comes over, works with me and a couple guys, you know, uh, and, and they, you know, I have some people that come over, but it's what you said last week. And you said, look, if you're not willing to get tapped out in the gym, you can't grow. And you said it here in business, as far as getting out of your comfort zone. And you mentioned like, you got to do things. You can't just stick to what you know. And, and that takes a lot of, of discipline and put your pride and ego aside because I would go in and if I trained with somebody, I think like anybody, I'm just opening, I'm going behind the curtain here. I just didn't want to get submitted. I would just want to train and, and just do what I know how to do. And five minutes, you know, five minute round ends next round. And, you know, no matter what we learned in class that day or what we drilled or what we talked about when it was time to roll, I go back to what I like to do. And he said last week, and you were talking about Gordon Ryan and you specific, and I remember, cause you said, Gordon Ryan talks about all the time how he'd get tapped out and tapped out. And Gordon Ryan, arguably, maybe not arguably, is the best grappler on the planet Earth right now, right? And we happen to be working on a certain thing right now. And, and uh, I was like, you know what? I just got to just commit. And my thing was 90 days. If you remember, I, I don't know if I told it to you, but I'm like, 90 days. I'm just going to stay committed to trying to find this entrance into deep half guard and just try to figure that out and, and a couple other things. And I got submitted three or four times yesterday and I freaking loved it. And I will tell you this, I, at the end of that class, I felt like my jujitsu just went up another level from that. And, and, and I'm so excited about that because it's the same in business. When you get out, if somebody came to the event, the seminar, and all they did was implement a pricing structure, and they get out of their comfort zone and they were afraid of commitments or contracts or terms or whatever. And they just did that. You said it, Tass said it, I said it. Their business instantly is just going to go up another level, just like that. I mean, it it really does parlay into everything that we do. So I just want to help this industry. And I know we're just another group, guys. You know, we're just another group that people view us as we're just trying to sell our consulting. And that is a puzzle I don't know how to solve yet to let people know that I think that we're, we're really good at what we do. Uh, and, and we're not just another group because Jason doesn't need the money. 
Tassel doesn't need the money. I don't need the money from consulting. I wouldn't be consulting a guy who has a school a mile down from me if my focus wasn't to grow this industry and professionalize the industry and help everybody in it. So that's my final thought. So I appreciate you coming on, man, and uh, sharing your wisdom. And I'll text you to see if the back is better tonight. <laughs> to see All right. Yeah. Training in the that's it. It's been my pleasure, guys. Thanks for having me on. Uh, Mike, let me know if you're good to train tomorrow. <laughs> Will do. Thanks, right. guys. See you in March if I don't see you before. All right. Sounds good. All right, guys. Thanks, everybody. Thank Appreciate it, everyone. Bye-bye.